Okay, so welcome everyone to another FX Street webinar. Uh, today, um, my name is Fan Yang, CMT and Chief Technical Strategist here at FX Times. And uh, today at FX Street, I'm going to take a look at the majors, you know, the euro dollar, pound dollar, you know, major crosses um, from a technical perspective. Um, but we also have to, to sort of put that uh, fundamental backdrop in there as well because we know a very important risk event is just on the horizon, right? Okay, so let's start with the euro dollar and sort of paint the picture of, uh, of what's developing here in the markets. Okay, so in June so far we have had a corrective rally against the decline we saw in May. So if we go back up to the four-hour chart, it's a little more clear here. So in May, we had a slide, right, risk aversion, then the market um, you know, stayed above the 1.23, came down to 1.2285, and then came back up to one, above 1.23 to start June. And since then, uh, we found resistance here at 1.2744 last week. Okay, now this level, I mean, this uh, topping, came after the FOMC meeting last week where uh, we you know saw that there was no QE we had a continuation of our uh, of the Fed's um, operation twist you know uh, selling short-term bonds buying longer-term bonds basically extending the maturity okay uh, trying to improve the liquidity and whatnot but uh, the point is, without QE, you know, we didn't get that boost from a risk perspective. So w with QE, you know, we would have expected the dollar to be pressured. Uh, you would have expected, you know, more uh, risk on, more equity ra rallies, and that would also help the euro dollar rally. But we didn't get that. Instead, we had quick, we had a volatile reaction, and then a follow through the next day on Thursday. Um, that fell below this June corrective pattern. So as we come towards the end of June, okay, we continue to be in this downward uh, pattern, and this is also from pricing in of the EU summit, uh, of risk aversion ahead of the EU summit. Okay. So a, a lot of this risk sentiment is uh, is based on your, the eurozone, right? We have Spain, you know, banking problem, bailout. Now we're talking about uh, the overall problem, overall debt prop, sovereign debt problems, and how the EU is going to try to manage that, how it's going to try to resolve that. The next big thing is the fiscal union, okay, fiscal pact. Um, so right now they have a monetary pact, right? Uh, you know, they, they share the central bank, share a central currency, but with the fiscal pack, you, you have more regulation on, on um, you know, fiscal policy uh, within each country. You know, it's a tighter European Union in general, right? So instead of looking into the direction of a Eurozone break, the market has been in June so far pricing in the Eurozone, uh, you know, finding ways to come together even more. But Recently, you know, we see that Merkel is not budging. Uh, Merkel being the Chancellor of Germany, who, you know, basically Europe right now has two types of countries, right? We have the countries with debt, pro debt problems, with really bad credit rating, and then we have countries like Germany, um, I think the Netherlands, but mainly Germany having good credit credit rating and really supporting the economy of the eurozone as a whole. If you look at the eurozone, it's pretty much in recession if it's if not for Germany's economic output. So you now Germany is uh, is at one one side of the table, the side that has good credit. But so so you have ideas like the euro bond floating out there, um, but Germany is going to be opposed to that. It's sort of like you know it's sort of like like say you have insurance, health insurance, right, and you have perfect health. You know, you don't smoke, drink, party, or, or uh, you know, do risky things like uh, like in the X Games or you know, 
whatever, you know, risky, risky uh, sports, you don't do any of that, you know, that means you should be, you should have a good premium on your health insurance, right? But imagine, okay, now you have, you know, maybe not immediate family, but now you have your cousins and you have these uh, distant relatives that want to get bet, get on back of your good good um, health and sort of pool together for health insurance as a group. So for them, it's good, especially if your distant cousins are, you know, smokers, drinkers, and, and you know, like to bungee jump and jump out, out of helicopters, you know, and parachute or whatever. So they would get, their premium would go down because you have better premium, uh, better uh, health status. But for you, it's, it's you know, it's not good because now you have to, your premium is going to go up because of that because of your your uh unhealthy cousins you know being in this pool for your health insurance so it, it's in the, it's a similar idea and that's why germany you know merkel is opposed to it and that's why some uh, recently you do see german yields go up german yields going up means uh their their borrowing costs going up well you know it has re, it has been going down down but now with this idea that hey, you know, the, the eurozone is going to be more meshed together. Now you do see you do see uh, German Germany's uh, yield coming back up a little bit, and you just had you know Egan Jones uh, downgrade Germany's credit rating. So all these all these fundamental factors shaping into um, you know uh, into the next big theme, which is do we are we going to get a move ahead in this fiscal union? Uh, is Merkel going to be uh, making concessions, or is she going to be very steadfast, you know, very adamant? She did say, you know, as long as she lives, she she won't approve of euro bonds, which is pretty much pooling together um, everyone's risk. Okay, and she's opposed to that adamantly. Okay, so that's that's why we have this risk aversion ahead of the EU summit, but uh, we don't have the type, the, the panicky type of risk aversion, okay, because we're on one side of the risk event. The market is still not, you know, completely committed to the downside. There's still some, you know, ray of hope, I guess, uh, in that the, the, you know, we'll come up with some um, some solution, maybe not euro bonds, but definitely uh, more more fiscal governance as a as a whole as you know as a european union so things like that can move forward um the this eurozone experiment and keep it keep it afloat and that would continue to you know uh stabilize the euro dollar and and put put a bottom to it okay but if you have Marco being adamant and really just continued dissidence between the eurozone leaders, especially between countries with good credit and countries with bad credit, that type of uh, you know fighting, you could see the euro dollar continue to fall. So that sets up our our uh, outlook. Um, so ahead ahead of the EU right now, 124.30 and 124 seems to be a very important support. Okay. Overnight, we saw that 125 is an important resistance. So, it, you know, as far as a uh, range, we're in this narrow range right now ahead of the EU. Okay, we had a strong slide, and then the market became choppier, and now I think we're flattening out ahead of the EU. Okay, so that that should paint the narrative. Okay, but from a both fundamental and technical uh, technical perspective. Okay, now. You know, after Thursday and Friday, for me, uh, you know, I look at the market uh, as far as trading wise. I, I look at the fundamentals and I look at technicals to give, you know, to give entry ideas. The fundamentals give sort of a the general directional idea. And right now, you know, everything is filtered through whether it's risk on or risk off. Okay, so if there's risk on after the EU summit, you can expect the the Euro dollar to first of all push above 125, okay, and then when the market comes up here, you see this double top, right? You see this, uh, okay. So risk on, 
you know, I like to, ahead of the EU summit, maybe there are some opportunities to trade uh, resistance and support levels. But during the EU summit, I feel very vulnerable to headlines coming out of the summit. And I don't think, uh, you know, we as retail traders have, uh, will, will be able to stay ahead of those headlines. Okay. But after the EU summit, I think we can judge from price action whether the market is risk on or risk off, and whether the, the market you know, expects uh, optimism or has has real material to build on that uh, optimism. Okay, so agreements on, on on regulation terms, for example, will help uh, will help the euro dollar continue higher. And if you look at the four hour chart. Okay. You know, I think we we would have upside risk towards 1.2820 and even 1.30. Okay, so after the EU summit, if there is risk on, I think uh our, our targets can be 1.2820 and then 1.30. Okay? But if the market crosses below 1.24, you know, stays below 1.24, maybe we have some initial, you know, initial battling whipsaw during the EU. Uh, but come end of Friday and come beginning of next week, if the market is sliding below 1.24, now I'm expecting that to at least get down to 1.2285, 1.23, and because it's within the theme that uh, that that gave May the risk off mode. Now we'll continue that theme and look for even lower targets. If you look at the weekly chart, you probably see better targets. It's going to get a little clou crowded here in the weekly chart. Um, but yeah, 1.19, 1.20 pivot could be our next targets uh, below the 1.2285 June, May, June low. Okay, but in the short term, 1.2285, 1.23 would be the the target uh, for a risk off reaction to the to the EU summit. Okay, ahead of the EU summit, look for sideways action. All right. Okay, it's a it's a bit of a strange day for me because um, I was looking at you know, risk on risk off, right? I, I, I see that in the euro dollar, sorry, sorry for the clicks and, and, and changing the charts um, back and forth, but I wanted to make another point in, in that, you know, it's, it's an interesting day in that the market here, you know, had an overnight range and broke below that range. Okay, and I was looking for the S&P 500 to, to um, confirm. So if there's risk off, that would help me confirm and be more confident of the bearish outlook, right? Risk off would be strong U.S. dollar, and if it's if it's risk off uh, coming from eurozone, you know it's usually we usually see the euro uh, fall as well. But in any case, here's the S&P 500, and today the market broke into new highs for the for the week, and for and uh, now we're heading up towards pretty key levels, right? A previous uh, resistance here, one uh, thirteen thirty one eighty five, our two hundred hour moving average. Okay, so we're actually re we are actually seeing risk on today. Okay, you see the RSI here pop up above sixty. That's a sign of uh, the loss of bearish momentum. So I'm not seeing risk confirmation for the euro dollar to fall off like that. In the meantime, we, we see more than just the euro dollar falling. We see the pound dollar falling as well. So here's the pound dollar one hour chart. Okay, despite risk being put on, the dollar, the, the US dollar is gaining. Usually when risk on dynamic is in the market, the US dollar loses. Okay, so today it's a bit of a, uh, a bit of 
that unclear correlation here with risk in the U.S. dollar. As far as the pound dollar, you know, I was looking for this type of price action swing down towards, you know, maybe first we test this 1.5430 pivot down to the 1.54 handle. Okay, that would have been my uh, swing projection there. Okay, again, I would be more confident of the swing projection if the S&P 500 was also falling instead of making new highs for the day and the week. Okay. So, you know, do expect this to give you another corrective rally. Now, that that's my anticipation right now. Um, even though the market has so far been uh, proving me wrong, now, I'm, I'm, I was even looking for support earlier, but now we're, we're almost back to this week's low. Okay, but I think if the S&P 500 continues to make new highs, I think then this low is really going to be hard to break. And if I'm wrong there, it's it's one of those you know days where correlations we've seen uh, break and. I would stay on the sidelines and look for the market to you know, align itself again, give us uh, some clues, maybe at the other end of the EU summit instead of uh, ahead of it. Okay. In any case, um, price action, if we don't think about the fundamentals, we don't think about risk, uh, we just look at the pound dollar, we topped off here at a key resistant, uh, key pivot, it was support before, this was the reaction after that form C. Very strong volatility, very wide volatility, but we saw support here at 1.5655. Uh, then it was tested as resistance and held held there. Now we also had 200 hour moving average. We had the June's broken support trend line tested as resistance, and so far the market pretty basically respected it. And the fall here below 1.56 opened up our 1.5540 low here, as well as these lows down here, 1.5430, 1.54. Uh, but I, I think if, uh, unless the S&P 500 starts to you know, fall back sharply, I don't see this swing developing. Okay. Another way to, you know, if you don't believe in this uh, swing projection, if you think the market is more tentative but still has a bearish outlook, another way to look at a possible target or another guide for a possible target is using the Fibonacci expansion. So you saw one leg down like this. Okay. Uh, this expansion tool basically measures your your first swing in a direction, then it measures or projects a second swing in that direction. So we saw that you see we saw that 100% swing projection would get us where down to this 1.5413 area, right? 100 Fibonacci expansion. But if it's going to be more tentative, maybe a 61.8% expansion can be expected instead. Okay, and this is just above 1.55 handle psychological support. So 1.5505 might be our, you know, our, our session uh, target if this bearish outlook continues, bearish development continues, instead of the more aggressive 1.5413, based on the fact that the market is not likely in a panic mode, but more likely in a, a tentative bearish bias mode. And this swing projection can be, this type of swing projection, you know, I showed it for the pound dollar, but it can also be applied for the Aussie and the Kiwi dollar. Now, the Aussie dollar is a little more in line with um, with our risk, okay, in that, you know, we're not really, we actually made a new high in the U.S. session. So that's, you know, it's, it's a little more, quote, unquote, logical. It's behaving more in line or aligned with uh, our risk co correlation. Okay. Um, but it's going to be hard to break above 1.01. 1 
at the moment. That seems to be the resistance, uh, psychological resistance, but we also see the 200-hour moving average here acting as resistance. Another sign that the bearish bias is still there is that the RSI is able to hold below 60 for the most part. Okay, if the RSI after tagging 30 fails to break above 60 and then falls back below 40, that's a sign of uh, bearish momentum developing, a, a persistent bearish momentum developing. Okay, if you have the RSI back and forth like 70, then 30, then 70, that uh, that's a sign that the market is in more more or less sideways, you know, consolidation rate or slash range bound type of market. But uh, if the RSI here starts to stay below 60, falls back below 30, tags 30, that kind of action would reflect uh, bearish momentum developing. Okay, and so far I think we're about what 38.2, 50% retracement. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so looking here, looking to the downside, I just want to see the S&P 500 uh, also start to fall off. You know, euro pound, euro dollar start uh, also start to fall off. Then I'll be more confident, especially if the market also breaks below 1.0050. Okay, and then below 1.0050, which is breaking below this trend line, short-term trend line. If we break below 1.0038, we pretty much have a double top. Right, one top here, another top here. Okay. And that would open up the parity level and this week's low at 99.66. Um, now, ahead of the EU summit, if the market does start to slide lower, you know, there's one projection as such. You know, down to, toward 98.30, this is 100% swing projection. Okay, but again, let's take a look at what the 61.8% uh, expansion would be. Okay, because again, the Aussie dollar you know, is also a pair that moves on risk sentiment, right? Risk on would push the Aussie dollar up, risk off would push it down. Ahead of the EU summit, I think um, risk on or risk off should be sort of capped. So instead of the one, the hundred percent projection to ninety-eight thirty-two, we look at sixty-one point eight percent projection, which is at ninety-nine thirty, and it's really close to our previous support pivots here at ninety-nine twenty-four twenty-five level, you know, down to down to twenty. Okay, so twenty to thirty, ninety-nine twenty to thirty would be, for me, uh, the bearish target the maximum bearish target ahead of the EU summit, okay, but even that is, uh, you know, we, we would see a, a strong slide down like that. Okay, so realistically, uh, a more conservative outlook before the EU summit would be this parity level. Okay, so the bearish bias holds. Uh, the market below 1.01, .01, looking at looking towards parity. That's the bearish uh, buy. That's the bearish outlook. But if the S&P 500 does not fall off, and you, you look at your equity charts and they don't fall off, risk is still on. You know, I think uh, we we hang around here. Okay. The Kiwi dollar. Okay. Also broke below this rising trend line, uh, channel trend line of June. Thing is, in this four-hour chart, the RSI is still uh, above 40, so we haven't destroyed the bearish momentum. Nonetheless, this was a very strong candle to break um, before the market consolidated. Now, I do have a bit of a bearish bias looking at the structure of the market because here we have this clear one, two, three, four, five wave down. Looks like a very traditional Elliott wave, Elliott wave, uh, motive wave or impulse wave. Okay, and the, the guideline is that 
wave three should be the strongest, and this one is by by far. And then wave one and wave five should be similar, which is you know, the case here as well. So one, two, three, four, five, very clear impulse wave down. And then here we have sort of a unclear wave structure, which for me is corrective at the moment. Okay. Now the problem is uh, we did not, we were not able to clear the 7878 low here today. We did dip a little bit below that and then came right back up. And in the one hour chart, the RSI has not come back below 40. So it's within this consolidation momentum. Now if the RSI is between 40 and 60, it's, it's, it represents uh, consolidation in that time period, time, time frame. Here we're consolidating. We did get the RSI push above 60 a little bit, but for the most part, it's between 60 and 40. Okay, now if we do come back here and clear the 7878 and uh, come back to attack 7840, you know, a swing projection would project us down to 7765, 7770, something like that. Okay, but again, if you use your Fibonacci expansion, you, you would be a little more conservative on your bearish target. And in this case, it would be just below our, our previous low here of 78.40 down to 78.25. Okay, 100% expansion is down to 77.60 area. Okay. So that's the Kiwi dollar. Uh, I have a bearish bias, but for now, since we are tentative ahead of the EU, the, the EU summit, the bearish outlook should be uh, limited to 78.25 or 78.40 even. All right. Um, we'll see though. We'll see if the market's able to top off. That's going to be important. Uh, in this U.S. session to see if it tops off. And if the S&P 500 does top off, that should give us more uh, confidence that our dollar crosses should top off as well. Okay. Uh, guys, let me know what pairs you guys want to look at. I'm just going to go over some of these majors, but maybe you guys have uh, other currency pairs you want to look at. Uh, feel free to uh, let me know, and I'll get to that in a few mo few minutes after I go over just a couple more of these measures. Here's the dollar yen. Uh, let me actually go to the one hour chart and this was, uh, you know, if you stay on top of the market and uh, you come to FX Times to some, you know, read some of the articles there, FX Street I know does a good job uh, also sharing some of our, um, some of our articles. Um, but early in the week, maybe you have, you saw this, uh, the market was a bit overbought in the dollar yen. Okay, um, and then we got this bearish divergence. Okay, not only that, this is the type of uh, signal I, I tend to look for when when I'm looking at the market to uh, when I'm looking at overbought, oversold kind of signals. When I'm looking at resistance and support, you now seeing the market push push uh, towards those resistance or support levels, and and uh, you know if I'm trying to uh, you know use a counter trend counter trend uh, idea, counter trend entry. Now I look at these bearish divergence with the RSI and also here we get bearish divergence relative to the to, to the distance from our Bollinger Band. Okay. Um, now this Bollinger Band is has a different parameter than most of the conventional Bollinger Bands. I use the 200 period and I use three standard deviations. Um, conventionally it's 20 period and two standard deviations. Okay, but I use 203. Uh, to me, that it captures more extreme moves. Okay, um, so in this case, you see the market here stretch out the Bollinger Band a bit by uh, breaking above it. But then since then, even though it's making newer highs, it sort of slowed down. Okay, and hasn't been able to tag the Bollinger Band. So in a sense, that is also bearish divergence with regard to the distance from the Bollinger Band. Okay, now in this case, we did return back to the uh, to, to the 200 moving average, which was our 
our target. Our target was 79.50 area uh, down to 79.30 area, which is this pivot. Okay, and the market did reach that. And it was it was important when the market reached that because it's also testing a rising trend line that goes back to the beginning of June. Okay, so it's testing some support pivots, some uh, and, and a key rising support trend line. Then you got this bullish divergence with the RSI again. Okay, so now from there, I don't necessarily have a very strong bullish outlook, um, but the bearish outlook could be concluded. Okay, and that was really the latest uh, dollar yen uh, update I had was down here when the market was testing this support. You know. But and now in the US session the market is pushing above our week our week's high here and really above a very important resistance that goes back to the to earlier in June. Okay, this opens up the eighty pivot. Uh, 80 up to 807, 61.8% retracement. Um, so that would be another level to look for resistance. Okay. As far as the longer term outlook, you know, I think this market it is not bullish or bearish right now. It's been bearish since March. Then we broke above that declining channel. So maybe we are developing some bullish bias, especially looking at this four hour chart and seeing that you know the RSI is held above forty. That shows you that hey, since uh, we since we established some bullish momentum here, if the RSI doesn't fall below forty and breaks back above sixty, it's more indicative of a of a bullish uh, momentum. Whereas before when this RSI dipped below 40 here, it's not that clear. It makes the momentum very unclear. Okay, and uh, that gets to my next point for Boyke. You know, why do I use 40 and 60? It's one of those I pick those things I picked up for in my studies to become a, a CMT. Um, Andrew Cardwell, he's sort of, he's a I guess the RSI guru. He also uses 40, 60, and he explains that. You know, the RSI really you know, is not necessarily a counter trend tool. It's an oscillator, so people look at you know above 70 as an overbought, below 30 as oversold. Okay, that's one way to look at it. But uh, if you another way to look at it is, is you know putting the 40-60 level. If the market is bearish. It should hold mostly below 60 and be able to break below 40, and you know, tagging 30 would confirm strong bearish momentum as well. But the fact that you know you could observe some momentum bias, uh, for example, here when the when the market here topped off in March and started to decline, uh, the RSI here was able to crack 40, but then it wasn't able to break back above 60 here. So that showed either the momentum is consolidating or it's, it's slightly bearish. Now we did eventually get the RSI to kiss 30 to show that it's bearish. Okay, but here we had some trouble. Here we had bullish divergence leading to the RSI breaking above 60. So that point, look, it looks like the trend is in trouble with this swing here. Okay, but eventually it continued lower, and again, for most part here holding below 60. Um, is indicative of, of a bearish trend. Okay, but as you entered into May and, and mid-May, you see the market being more and more choppy. Even though it was able to make lower lows and lower highs to continue the trend downwards, eventually we saw this RSI pop up of, of above 70, and that helped um, that helped confirm the strength of this breakout. Right, like that showed that we have momentum in this breakout. But then again, we had the RSI fall back below 40. So again, not a very clear confirmation as far as momentum goes, but as far as price and act market action, you know, we see here coming down to 50%. We saw the, the price action come down and test our previous declining tr trend line resistance now as support, and it did turn it into support. So uh, 
this would not have been a great example of the RSI giving us clear trending signals, uh, but we do see that sometimes. Uh, you know, maybe another example I, I can show you where the market is trending and the RSI behaves very well, you know, either holding below 60 in a downtrend or holding above 40 in an uptrend. Okay, and, and then if the RSI is below 40, and I mean between 40 and 60, it's likely in a consolidation. And when the mar market breaks and push the RSI above 60 or below 40, you could use that as well uh, as a sign of breakout. Okay, so momentum breakout is if the RSI breaks above 60 or 40 after being stuck between that, those levels. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at the euro pound. I think this would give us a good example of the RSI showing you bearish uh, outlook. Okay, uh, the daily chart you do see it you know, holding below 60, and then here again it's hold, it held below 60, so we have the bearish clue, especially if the RSI here pushes back below 40. Okay, that would help us confirm the break from this ABC pattern and the trend line associated with that. If you look at the four-hour chart, I believe uh, you do see some clear bearish action here during April. Okay, you see the RSI for most part stay below 60 and tag 30 all throughout May, uh, April. Okay, but then here in May we broke 60. Okay, and that would that was a uh, initial sign that oh this bearish outlook has is in trouble okay our momentum is lost now either the momentum is going to be bullish or it could be um, sideways okay now coming down here oh the RSI is held at 40 it looks like it wants to develop bullish momentum if it can't hold above 40 and here we push above 60 price action also uh, rising back above uh, 0.80 so that that shows us that we're probably in another leg of this correction, right? Now that we are developing bullish momentum. Okay. So here, after that, we did eventually get another leg up. Um, but after that leg up, it's been very uh, unclear and choppy. Okay. So we lost the bearish momentum, we, uh, the bullish momentum, but did not really set bearish momentum. Here, the market came back up here. Volatile, volatile sideways market, so the RSI isn't even stuck between 60 and 40, but eventually it did, uh, and then you got more of a congestion. Okay, you know we we did get high, lower lows and higher highs, and eventually the market broke to the downside and tagged 30 here in the four-hour RSI. So it's reestablishing some some bearish momentum. And now with this RSI popping back up above 60 towards 50, you know, if we do get a strong pullback and the RSI gets to 60 but fails to break above 60 and comes back down like this, you know, that would be, in terms of momentum, a confirmation of the bearish reversal. Okay. And the bearish reversal in this time frame is really bearish continuation in the longer time frame going back to March. And if the euro pound does continue lower after the EU summit, our next support pivot, looking at this uh, weekly chart now, is down here near the 77 level. This was uh, the 2008 consolidation period. Okay, you know we we might get 79 as a psychological support, and maybe even 78 area in the middle of this consolidation. Uh, but key support is definitely down towards the 77 level, where we had the the where we had this consolidation low here in 2008. Okay, so that's the euro pound threatening to threatening this bearish continuation, especially if this pullback respects 80-60. Uh, the the fact that in this four-hour chart the market's been able to whip across this 200 moving average is a sign that there's no direction. But once the market's able to stay below it, that's going to be a clear sign of direction or clearer sign of direction. Okay. 
and in that scenario, our first target is the 90, uh, 79, 40, 50 area, 50 area. Below that, 90, uh, 79, and then below that, 77. Okay, so that's the euro pound there. Um, what else do we want to take a look at? You know, euro yen and euro and pound yen. We'll take a quick look at that. Uh, but I think we're going to be wrapping up today's session soon. Okay. Now, euro yen, looking at this chart, you see that it's been bearish, right? But recently in June, we turned, you know, yeah, you see the RSI here, stay below 60 and even stay below 50 for most part. So it shows even, you know, a sharper downtrend for most of May. And then here the RSI popped up above uh, above 60 and even kissed 70, you know, showing us a bullish momentum. And recent price at, recent RSI here in the four hour chart dips below 40. So we lost some of that bullish momentum. And uh, you see this market looks like it wants to top off, falling below this rising trend line. But really we need to break below this, the origin here. 98.55, maybe even 98.50 before uh, we can be sure of the, you no, know, we can be clearer of the bearish continuation. Um, now, let's go into the one hour chart. And in the one hour chart, to me, the bearish swings, the bearish structure does look very motive. Oh, this is, okay, 30 minutes. One hour chart, okay, here's a clearer picture, right? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Again, this is uh, Elliott Wave Principle. Uh, if you are not familiar, let me know, and I, I'll go over some of the basics here. But and the thing we need to know right now is that, you know, just like the Kiwi dollar, you know, we saw a very traditional motive wave. Here is also a traditional a motive wave because this wave three is stronger than your wave one and five. Also your wave one and five are pretty similar to each other. So it, it looks like a very traditional bearish motive wave. Okay, and and now since then and we talked about this in the Skype room and and you can look look up look me up in Skype by the way, fan.yang.cmt and uh we can always you know chat about the markets. Um, there's a room I'm in where we we always talk about these uh, trade plans or uh, not or just ideas in general. Okay. So, okay, can EW also be five down, three up? Yes, this is a uh, one of the tr traditional, you know, expectation of the Elliott wave is that we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we have one, two, three. Well, maybe this is already a one, two, three. You know, one, two, three, but beware because there are double threes. Okay, and I, 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 right now I tend to believe there's more likely to be a double three, just because this ABC so far is very, you know, it's not strong enough. It is not, I should say. Uh, it looks too similar to this wave two, right? One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. Now I expect corrections to, to last somewhat longer than this. Okay, so if we get this this dip here, I would be aware that this could be a bear trap, especially if you see your RSI here come down. And oh, there we go, Elena. Is she in here? Well, anyway, I, I, I'll. You know, I like it when you guys uh, look me up in Skype and we can continue discussions of the markets. But here, so so if the RSI comes down to 40 and sees sees support there, or even if it cracks it a little bit and com comes right back up, that's that's going to be a sign that oh, we're not ready for the bearish continuation. If the RSI does push back below 40, you see that what we basically have is a failure of the RSI to push above 60. And then if the RSI falls back below 40, that's bearish momentum 
continuation. That would be a very good sign for the bearish outlook. Okay. Uh, but before that, we would be in consolidation mode. And I think, uh, you know, the double three is basically where you have ABC, really, or you could call that W, and then this X, and then another Y, y which is also an ABC, although, you know, in a zigzag, this could be an ABC, uh, no, one, two, three, four, five as well. Okay. The point is I don't believe that the consolidation is over, judging from our uh, previous now, wave two, wave four, I feel like this should be a little bit longer. Okay. In any case, if uh, after the EU summit, you know, this does turn out to be consolidation. Let's say the EU summit is right now and the market goes straight up like this, then uh, yeah, I don't think that's consolidation if it's able to accelerate through uh, 136 here, 100.36. Okay, um, and you know, break above this declining trend line. Okay, but I think uh, we could edge up a little higher, maybe towards our hundred psychological psychological uh, resistance at 100. Okay, which is close to the 200-hour moving average as well, and uh, maybe we start that resistance here at 77.87. Okay, one of the Elliott wave guides for a correction is back to wave four. Okay, now I don't, you know, I don't, I, want, I don't want to say that's exactly where I would um, short it, but I want to look for uh, reasons, uh, uh, look for supply factors around that area, like up to 100 level, okay, and also this declining trend line. And if you look at the RSI, I mean, look at the Fibonacci retracement, that's, you know, around 38.2% retracement. 50% is at 117, okay? But I think if we hold below 100, it would be a very clear sign that the market is bearish, okay, and get another swing down. Okay. Here's the Skype. Uh, Name there, fan.yang.cmt, okay. All right, so that's your structure for the Euro Yen, what I'm expecting. And uh, if we do get that continuation, all right, we could get kind of like this kind of swing projection, okay. So uh, the swing projection first sees 79, I mean 97, as a pivot, then I would look at you know maybe the 96, somewhere within these lows here for June. All right. Now the fact that we had the RSI push above 70 here in the four-hour chart makes me not have such a strong bearish uh, outlook. Okay. So for now, even though the market is continuing to make lower highs and lower lows. And if you look at the daily chart, no, actually the weekly chart, oh man, you and squeeze it, you know, you see our next support pivot here back towards uh, the 2000, no, 2000 low here at 88.96 or let's say 89. Okay, that could be the next level of support. Okay, but for now, I'm looking in a shorter term and seeing that our momentum uh, in the four-hour chart uh, is not persistently bearish anymore, I want to limit that bearish outlook, the scope of the bearish outlook to the very sh to the to the short term and towards the June lows for now. Okay, uh, pound yen. I think it does look similar to me uh, in that this looks like it could be an impulse wave down and right now uh, you know we're likely in an in incomplete corrective wave okay as far as RSI goes or momentum goes it's it's holding on to that bearish momentum okay uh, what else can we say about this 
We did break the June rising trend line, but it's not been a very strong follow through yet, just like in the euro yen. The breakout was in a strong, strong swing, but the follow through has so far been just consolidation. Okay. Now, if this consolidation completes, and we pretty much, you know, let's say we stay below this support here, previous support, and that acts as resistance. That's, that would be a good sign for the bearish continuation. Okay, first to test these recent lows here, but really the target is down towards the 122 level. Um, if you use a if you use a expansion or you use a projection like this, you know, that also goes down towards 122, you know, 30 or 20, or if it's it's from a little higher, maybe down to 122.50. You know, some something like that down here. Okay, and once again, just like your dollar crosses, you can use your Fibonacci expansion tool to get more of a 61.8% expansion, which would be down to 123.10. Uh, maybe uh, if it's a, it's from a little higher, 123.20. You know, so th those are your your more conservative targets down here for the sh for the bearish outlook. Okay. All right, so that should do it for me for today. Thank you for your attention, and I uh, hope to see you guys, you know, between our webinars, which I do about once a month here in FX Street. I hope I do see you on Skype. Um, other than that, you know, trade well, trade safe. Now, I talked about analysis today, but there there are a lot of other things in, in trading, um, you know, managing your trades and whatnot. So, you know, we could share our ideas uh, if you look me up in Skype and if you uh, stay on the market by visiting fxtimes.com.